Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Ben Badler with Baseball America here. Uh, I just spent last week watching the top 2018 and 2019 prospects in the Dominican Prospect League, uh, although, as you can see here, uh, this event was not in the Dominican Republic. It was in Joliet, Illinois. Uh, it was a great event, and if you're a Baseball America subscriber, we're going to have reports and videos for you guys on the top players on BaseballAmerica.com, so... Uh, please make sure you're subscribed to BA, but today I wanted to give you guys a look at what a showcase looks like looks like for Latin American amateur players. I write about these players all the time, but I wanted to walk through it with you so you guys can see everything for yourself. Uh, obviously, these events are all different, and teams also bring players into their academies. Uh, if they're at least 16, they go to their trainer's fields. The players are evaluated in other different ways, but I want you guys to see how an event like this one run by the DPL works. And if you're watching this video on YouTube, Facebook, uh, and you like it, let me know by giving this video a like and leave me a comment with your thoughts or any questions that you have. So for anyone who doesn't know, the Dominican Prospect League is a league where a bunch of trainers from across the Dominican Republic pool their players together to play in games. And the DPL for this event picked some of their top 2018 and 2019 players to travel to play in Joliet, Illinois, which is the home ballpark of the Independent League Joliet Slammers. So scouts are looking at some of the top talent for next year and two years out. So it's kids who are pretty much all 14 and 15 years old. And it's a four-day event, and it starts with what's called a, uh, a showcase day or a workout day. And that's where you bring in all the players, and they run the 60. Uh, the infielders take ground balls. The outfielders throw from the outfield. And everyone takes batting practice. So the point of this workout day is it's the first day. You're a scout. You come in, and, and you get a look at every single player or every single position player at the event. And you get an idea of their bodies, their tools, their actions, and their mechanics. Uh, you know, you've got 40 or so players here. It's, it's a lot to keep track of. Uh, that's just the position players. So, uh, but you see a guy running in the, the 60, 6.6 seconds. Uh, that's a guy you're going to keep a close eye on during the game. Uh, same with a guy who shows really good defensive actions at, at shortstop. Uh, take an infield uh, or big power uh, or a nice swing in BP so uh, it's four teams and they run through the whole process team by team uh, so you just saw that Royal Blue team went first uh, they run the 60 uh, take infield outfield uh, and then BP and <clears throat> then the other three teams repeat the process so I don't have any video of the 60 yard dash because I was out there timing all the players running myself but uh, after the 60, they put all the infielders out there at shortstop and have them take ground balls. So uh, this is the navy blue team here. And this this gives you a feel for a player's footwork, his actions, uh, his hands, his throwing mechanics, his arm strength, arm accuracy, how he reaches down to field the ground ball, how he moves side to side, and charging on a slow roller, uh, how he throws on the move. It's, it's not a game, obviously, so uh, you don't get necessarily a feel for a player's reads off the bat or game instincts, but uh, if a player is light on his feet, he has a cannon for an arm, uh, or some type of an issue with his throwing or fielding mechanics, you can uh, pick that up here. So it's, it's helpful to know which guys to bear down on in the games, and also because in the game, you can't control how many balls get hit to a guy. Here, you get a bunch of ground balls hit to a player to at least uh, get a sense for his actions. Um, one of the other things that you see here during infield is, is a lot of players will field the ball. Uh, what, what, what They field it kind of like showcase style, where they field the ball, they shuffle, they shuffle, they shuffle, they, they set their feet, they gear up, uh, and then they throw to first. So one, it, it can make their arm look stronger than it is just because they're inching physically closer to first base, but 
too, it's, it's not the way to field the ball in the game because they're not accounting for the speed of the runner going down the line, which uh, at this level you actually see them do in the game sometimes. Uh, you saw him, uh, I saw him do it uh, quite a few times uh, in these games because players, you know, look, they have their trainers hitting them a billion fungos every day, but uh, if they don't play in games enough, uh, they don't necessarily have that internal clock to know, hey, uh, I've got to get rid of the ball more quickly. So uh, in the games, you see some routine ground balls to shortstop go for uh, infield singles sometimes. Uh, the other thing during infield here is that uh, having seen minor league teams take infields, uh, college teams do the same, uh, you see a lot less accuracy on, uh, on throws at this level. So... Uh, it's a showcase, so kids are trying to show off their arm strength, but uh, even when they're not, the throws tend to go wild uh, quite a bit. Uh, that's something that can improve with age uh, and experience and, <clears throat> and repetition, though, so uh, not uncommon to see. So uh, This is, by the way, Noel V. Marte. Uh, he is a shortstop uh, who trains with Banana. He is going to be uh, one of the top prospects in the 2018 class uh, showed uh, really good tools uh, during this event and uh, I think he's going to be a very very highly sought after player come uh, come July 2nd next year once he is uh, eligible to uh, to sign so uh, after infield they send all the outfielders out to right field uh, it doesn't matter if you're a center fielder or a corner outfielder uh, they all go to right field because you want to get a gauge of <clears throat> their arm strength. Uh, it's pretty much the same at every showcase you go to. Uh, you have somebody hitting them fungos uh, in right field. Uh, usually it's a ground ball and, and they throw maybe two to three throws to third base and then one or two throws home. Uh, in the game, you, you might not get an opportunity to see a guy make a throw at all uh, or make a competitive throw that gives a player the chance to show you his arm strength but here you get a bunch of throws to to see a player's arm strength as well as his throwing mechanics whether it's a long or a short arm stroke his arm action his footwork uh, running up to the ball and then on the throw as well and if there's any accuracy uh, to the throws also so um, you, you've got to keep an eye on how close the infielders creep toward the infield so you don't get fooled on arm strength. And then the other thing, especially at age 14, 15, uh, 16, the arm strength that a player shows month to month, day to day, and even throw to throw is not always consistent. A uh, player's arm should get stronger uh, from the time he's 14 until the time he's, let's say, 18, especially if he has room to fill out and has a good arm stroke uh, or arm speed. But uh, even here, you can see uh, an outfielder will show you what might look like a 55 arm on one throw, and then the next throw is like a four hopper to the bag. And you can see I've got a couple different camera angles here for the throws. Uh, let me know which one you guys like better. Uh, the one where I'm here, like in the outfield behind them, uh, or where I'm at the third base bag, uh, and you can see the throws coming in. Um, sometimes it just depends on how much time I have to, uh, uh, to get out to the outfield or, or to race over to third base to make sure I get these guys on, on film. But uh, curious to know what you guys think. Uh, this, by the way, Marco Luciano, uh, an outfielder and an infielder, so... Um, he's going to be one of the top prospects for 2018. So after outfield, they all uh, they run all the players through batting practice. So uh, you get a sense of each player's swing mechanics, his hitting actions, uh, bat speed, raw power. Uh, you've got to be careful on a few things. One is uh, the baseballs. If, if you got skinny kids smoking balls to the opposite field fence, <laughs> you might want to check what kind of balls they're using. Uh, and then a player's BP swing is not necessarily the same as his game swing. Uh, it's BP, so you've, you've got a guy putting it straight and over the plate. So it's easy for a hitter to be in sync, or should be easy for a hitter to be in sync and on time. 
Uh, but then in the game, the pitcher is throwing fastballs and off-speed pitches. Uh, the pitchers are uh, the pitches are in and out of the strike zone, so those swings tend to get bigger, uh, off balance, and don't necessarily look the same uh, as in batting practice. Um, and this workout day was a little bit unusual because it, it started a little after 5 p.m., so uh, it carried on into the night. Uh, in the Dominican Republic, everything happens during the day, so uh, kind of a cool experience for these players to get to play underneath the lights here. And uh, this again is Marco Luciano, one of the top 2018 prospects here from the Dominican Prospect League. Uh, very impressive BP power uh, and swing that he showed here at the, uh, the workout day. So <clears throat> the next three days, they play two games each day back to back. Uh, first, they start with some BP and infield and outfield, so you get another look at the players there. But uh, we just went over all that, so uh, let's get into the games. Uh, for this series, they also had a team of players from the United States, mostly Illinois, uh, who are about the same age as the Dominican players. And what that does is <clears throat> you get to see how the Dominican players who you're focusing on stack up against some of the kids from the U.S., uh, but also just logistically it's, it's difficult to put together an event like this and find, number one, uh, just enough pitchers and, and enough pitchers who can throw strikes consistently, and two, uh, get enough catchers. When you have a game in the Dominican Republic, you might have a couple pitchers who can throw strikes, but uh, realistically, a lot of time, they really struggle putting the ball in the strike zone, and that's even at age you know, 16, 17. Uh, it certainly doesn't get any better when the kids are 14 or 15, and because these kids are 14, 15, you don't want them throwing uh, seven innings. Uh, if you're a Japanese high school team or running the Cuban 15 and under national team, uh, yeah, you might throw uh, somebody like Adrian Morahone out there for 130-something pitches, but uh, with amateur pitchers in the Dominican Republic or Venezuela, uh, in these events, you're limiting the pitchers to usually one or two, maybe three innings maximum. Uh, so to play these games, you need a high volume of pitchers. So there were some Dominican pitchers here, but what they do is they mix in a lot of American pitchers onto the Dominican teams, just to give them enough arms, and I think that was a big positive for this event. Uh, you know, and, and then the other thing is, well, Venezuela, Puerto Rico, you get a lot of catchers coming out of there. Uh, the Dominican Republic just doesn't produce the same volume of catchers, so uh, they supplemented the Dominican rosters with some catchers uh, from the United States as well. And as, as, as far as the games themselves, I mean, you guys know how baseball games work, but uh, these are a little different than normal games. Um, they were uh, either nine or, or seven inning games sometimes, depending, I think, just either on uh, time or, or availability of pitchers. But uh, the biggest differences are that <clears throat> it's a showcase game, so the score doesn't matter, and they can be flexible with a lot of things. Uh, one is if a hitter draws a walk, uh, like right here, instead of going to first base, he stays up to bat, and they call, for the, call to the dugout, and they send out a runner over to first base because the scouts want to see the players swing the bat in games uh, but you also want to reward the hitter for having a good approach drawing the walk uh, so they send out a runner from the dugout to go to first base now depending on and, and the hitter stays up there so depending on the event sometimes they they reset the count to uh, to OO uh, what the DPL did was if the hitter draws a walk he stays up uh, but they start the next count at one and one um, another thing that's different is if a pitcher reaches his uh, maximum pitch count in an inning, say 30, 35 pitches in an inning, whatever it is, uh, they'll just change it up to the next inning. Uh, whoever's running the game will just shout, roll over, and they switch it up. At an event like this, like we talked about before, they only have a certain number of pitchers, so they don't want to burn them out. So you don't want to bring in a reliever mid-inning. So you just switch it up, and the team in the field comes into bat for the next half inning. On the other hand, if the inning goes by really quickly, uh, like a quick one, two, three inning, 
Uh, they might send up another hitter and keep everyone out there uh, to give the pitcher some more work, and scouts can see the hitters, uh, you know, see another hitter take uh, in at bat. And that's uh, looks like Jeffrey Diaz hitting his uh, second home run back-to-back <laughs> uh, -to -back in, in that first game, uh, 2018 outfielder. So uh, one of the things I like about international scouting, too, is the different vantage points you can get on players that you cannot get when you're doing pro scouting or watching a college or high school game. Uh, like right here, I'm standing on the field behind the plate. Uh, if I did that at a double A game, I would be uh, removed from the premises. Uh, now there's actually an L screen set up right behind the plate that I'm standing behind with a camera out uh, to the side. Uh, I'm not totally stupid, although I suppose that's a judgment call, but uh, it is cool to have the freedom to set up back there, uh, see hitters and pitchers from up close, and to get you guys some video from behind the plate uh, without the net getting in the way. Um, and I, I wouldn't do it here just because they're playing a game. Uh, but if, if you're a team and you're having a workout at your academy or, or at a trainer's field, uh, you can just go on the field, watch a pitcher or a hitter from behind the mound, set up cameras on the field. Uh, there's a lot more flexibility to, to, to see players from different angles that you can't really replicate with minor leaguers or college players for uh, obvious reasons. So... Uh, this was a, a really fun event, and I think uh, a very valuable one for scouts. So uh, I hope you guys liked this video and that it gave you a look at what one of the showcase events for Latin American amateur players uh, looks like and some insight into how they're run, uh, how they're organized. If you, if you did like this video, let me know by giving it a like. Uh, leave me a comment with your thoughts or any questions that you have. Uh, if you want to know more about the players who were here and other top international prospects for 2018 uh, and the 2019 classes, make sure you're subscribed to Baseball America. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I appreciate it. I appreciate you guys uh, supporting everything that we do at Baseball America. So uh, thanks for watching, guys.